In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray for our brothers and sisters who are asking to join us at Easter. You have called them and brought them to this moment. Grant them light and strength to follow Christ with resolute hearts and to profess the faith of the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The priest shall receive the basket from you, and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Armenian who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders. And bringing us into this country, he gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. 
and having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord.
Praise to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone, but Jesus was alone with them. As they were coming down the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what raising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to all of you to St. John Cathedral, the mother church of our Diocese of Lafayette. It's so important that all of you who are preparing to be received into the church and to be baptized, in a way, have your beginning <clears throat> here at St. John Cathedral. And I do want to welcome all of you who are preparing for baptism and who are preparing to make your profession of faith in the church, as well as to welcome all of your sponsors who are here this afternoon for this ceremony of the right of election. The right of election is the official designation, the official recognition of those who have committed themselves to study and to pray in preparation for being received into the church at Easter time. And it happens right at the beginning of the season of Lent in the church. 
that time, as we heard last Sunday, when Jesus prepared himself for his great work of redemption by going into a desert for 40 days, like the 40 days of Lent, to pray and to fast and to overcome sinfulness and temptation to sin. And so it is during this season of Lent that the Church calls all of us into the desert to make the same preparation in our lives. Jesus tells us in the Gospels that if we wish to be his followers, we must take up our cross each day and follow him. Because the cross is the pathway to true and everlasting life. We follow Jesus through suffering, even through death, as he did, to also follow him to resurrection, to true and everlasting life. The gospel that we just heard read is the gospel that is always read on this second Sunday of Lent. It's called the Gospel of the Transfiguration. That time when Jesus, along with the three leading apostles, revealed to them his resurrected self, his glorified self, to strengthen their faith. Jesus had been talking just before in this gospel about the fact that he would soon go into Jerusalem there he would be tried, there he would endure suffering and be put to death. You can imagine how the apostles must have felt disillusioned when here the Messiah whom they thought they were following, they thought was the new worldly ruler that would come to overthrow the Roman yoke under which Israel had been in for so long, now he was saying he would be put to death. And so Jesus takes those three apostles, Peter, James, and John, to the Mount of the Transfiguration and shows them his divinity, shows them his glorified self, that their faith might be strengthened in the times of trial that would come before them. The Gospels relate that two other persons from the Old Testament also appeared at that time, Moses and Elijah. Moses, the great lawgiver in the Old Testament, to point out the fact that Jesus the Messiah perfectly fulfills the law of God. And Elijah, chief among the great prophets in the Old Testament, to show them how Jesus is the one prophesied by all the prophets of the Old Testament who was to come, the Messiah, the Son of God. And the climax of this whole beautiful scene is the voice of God from the cloud. The cloud is always used in the sacred scriptures out of which God speaks. It was the cloud that hung over the tent in the Old Testament when the Jews were making their way from Egypt to the Promised Land. It was the cloud that always descended upon the great temple in Jerusalem when it signified that God's presence was there. And it was also spoken of in the New Testament when the cloud descended upon the Blessed Virgin Mary indicating that she was to be the mother of the Messiah. And now the cloud descends at this moment with the word of God. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Now the apostles' faith would be strengthened to endure the scandal of the cross also to endure the personal persecution that they would suffer for living the Christian faith. 
this beautiful scene of the transfiguration of the Lord was represented in one of the most famous paintings of the Christian era, the painting of the great artist Raphael called the Transfiguration. You can Google it. It stands in one of the museums at the Vatican as an indication of what a scene this must have been. And so this incident of the Transfiguration of the Lord is for all of us as Christians and especially for you who are preparing to be received into the church at Easter time. That no matter what challenges and difficulties come our way, as we seek to follow the Lord and listen to him as God tells us, that we always keep in view that image of the transfigured Christ to inspire us and also to strengthen our faith in times of difficulty, in times of temptation, in times of challenge. Again, welcome to all of you. Very pleased to be part of this ceremony with all of you this afternoon and look forward with you to our celebration of your entrance into the church at Easter time. God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Would those whose names were enrolled in the book of the elect be presented? From the parish of Sacred Heart, I present these catechumens. Tanner Baglow. Angelica, Angelica Colliver. Joshua Corbett. And I present these candidates. Penny Fontenot. Claire Kostelka, Trenton Monte, London Nims, William Thomason, Paula Thibodeau, the parish of St. Peter's Roman Catholic Church in Karen Crow, I present this catechumen, Peyton Elizabeth Campbell. I present this candidate, Mackenzie Davis LeBlanc. From the parish of Holy Cross Catholic Church, I present this catechumen, Elena Solomon. Bishop Desitel, from Our Lady of Fatima Parish, I present the following candidates. Melissa Pasacreva. Kaylin Williams. And Stephen Williams. Bishop Desitel from the Cathedral Parish of St. John the Evangelist, I present to you these catechumens. Kendall Reed, Kareem Douglas, and I present to you these candidates. Amanda Taylor, Kaylee Saunier, and Chitra Pickett. Good. 
Thank you, Reverend. From the parish of St. Anne's in Youngsville, Louisiana, I present this catechumen, Daniel Blanchard, And I present these candidates, Noah the Avenue, Jenny Boutte, Rob Knox, Sandy Knox. Bishop Desertel from the Parish of Immaculate Heart of Mary in Lafayette, I present these candidates, Jasmine Jefferson, Jaden Colon, Bishop Desitel, from the parish of Our Lady of Wisdom Church and Catholic Student Center, I present these catechumens. Kenny Emberly. Richard Lampkin. Andrew Roy. And these candidates, Brian DeVilliers. Claudia Lyles. Abigail Noyes, Jacob Willie. Okay, thank you. De la parroquia de San Jules, le presento a los siguientes catecúmenos. Jessica Méndez. Danilo Milán. Y los candidatos, Yasmín Velázquez. Herminia Soto. Daisy Cruz. Paulina Rodríguez, Julio Emanuel, Yereri Sima, Marcela Nieto, Julisa Bonilla, Fidel Urbina, María Rosario e Ismael Moreno. We can do both. No extra charge. <laughs> yeah. Good group, though. Thank you. Yeah, nice. Okay. Bishop Desitel, from the parish of St. Mary, Mother of the Church in Lafayette, I present this candidate, Holly Greffy. From the church of St. Bernard in Bro Bridge, I present these candidates, Grant, pray you, Madison Dupre, Hi, Madison. 
Joshua Fredu. From the parish of St. Edmund in Lafayette, I present these candidates Lakin Langley Smith. Scott Anthony Smith. Would the catechumens and candidates please stand? My correction, I apologize. Would the godparents and sponsors please stand? Yeah. Dear friends, these catechumens have asked to be initiated into the sacramental life of the church this Easter. During the period of their preparation, they have listened to the word of Christ and endeavored to follow his commands. They have shared the company of their Christian brothers and sisters and joined with them in prayer. These candidates, our brothers and sisters, have asked to be able to participate fully in the sacramental life of the Church. During the period of their preparation, they have reflected on the mystery of their baptism and have come to appreciate more deeply the presence of Christ in their lives. They have shared the company of their brothers and sisters joined with them in prayer, and endeavored to follow Christ's command more perfectly. I ask now, can those who are sponsoring these catechumens and candidates who have been presented attest to their worthiness and sincerity? Would the catechumens and candidates please stand? My dear catechumens and candidates, I now declare you to be members of the elect. And to those others seeking full admission into the Church, the Church recognizes your desire to be sealed with the gift of the Spirit and to have a place at Christ's Eucharistic table. Join with us this Lent in a spirit of repentance. Hear the Lord's call to conversion and be faithful to your baptismal covenant. Thanks be to God. God. We'll all please stand. My brothers and sisters, in beginning the period of Lent, we look forward to celebrating at Easter the life-giving mysteries of our Lord's suffering, death, and resurrection. These elect and candidates whom we bring with us to the Easter sacraments will look to us for an example of Christian renewal. Let us pray to the Lord for them and for ourselves, that we may be renewed by one another's efforts and together come to share the joys of Easter. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer, that these elects and candidates may find joy in daily prayer. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that they may read your word and joyfully dwell on it in their hearts. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that they may humbly acknowledge their faults and work wholeheartedly to correct them, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That they may dedicate their daily work as a pleasing offering to you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That you will protect and bless their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may share with others the joy they have found in their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, you created the human race and are the author of, the renew of its renewal. Bless all your adopted children and add these chosen ones to the harvest of your new covenant. As true children of the promise, may they rejoice in eternal life, one not by the power of nature, but through the mystery of your grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You have been elected and chosen by God and have entered with us on the journey to Easter. May Jesus himself be your way, your truth, and your life, especially during the approaching scrutinies for the catechumens. For the present, may God continue to lead and bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, and may the Lord remain with you always. Thank you.